Oscar Collazo, Griselio Torresola, undertake this incredible act as part of a revolutionary process that was going on in Puerto Rico that, be, that began really on the 26th of October in Pajardo when Pedro Aviso Campos was celebrating the birthday of the general who offered his life for the independence, the Puerto Rican general who offered his life for the independence of Latin America, Bernabe Valero, General Bernabe Valero. And so it's in Fajardo that the struggle of night, the, the, the rebellion of 1950 begins. Where it's obviously the greatest point of it will be in Hajuja. But at this point, the U.S. did not use its armed forces. Instead, the governor of Puerto Rico, you, 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 you used the National Guard to put down the, the forces. But remember, the Puerto Rican National Guard is ultimately under the U.S. president. Because he can federalize them at any point. And so, what did, not, what did Griselio Torresola and Oscar Collazo want to do? Did they want to kill Truman? I don't believe so. Did they want to kill anyone? No. They wanted to call in a dramatic way, in a very dramatic way, and the only way that they knew that they could call the attention of the world was to do this and literally risk their lives knowing they may not come out of their alive. They said you did it. Oscar did. This dramatic moment is obviously, if you read the transcripts of the trial itself, the, the judge placed it as one of the most important events probably in American history. Actually, there's a book called Shootout at Blair House which you should read um, about this incident. But what is important here is not just the heroism. It is a spirit that informs the nationalist movement, which is deeply rooted in Spanish mysticism. It's very important that you understand this. Mysticism is not about committing suicide. Mystics, if you ever want to understand any religious experience, study the mystics. If I want to study Judaism, I study the Jewish mystics. If I want to study Catholicism, I study the Catholic mystics. If I want to study Buddhism, I study the Buddhist mystics. And if you ever study the mystics, they are people who believe that they are truly carrying out something which is greater than themselves, something that's informed by a spirituality, and something that obviously speaks to a sense of their humanity. And I say this because what informed Oscar Collazo what informed his serenity, his brilliance? This man learned to read and write French in prison. All right? Wrote in French. All right? This man taught himself in prison. Lolita Lebron, while in prison, wrote poems, and she was given one of the top literary awards which most people don't know, for a poem that is 300 pages long, it is one poem in 300 pages. Because it's a mystical experience that she lives. It's called El Grito Primoroso, which is the cry that the woman makes when she's giving birth. That's Lolita's book, and she was given one of the top awards. 
literary awards for this book. What keeps these people, what keeps them so strong? What keeps a strong Kojaso in such a high level that the prisoners 11 were black and white and Latinos would stand up as if you were really, it was almost, you see that film, Moses crossing the, the Red Sea and the waters party. That's exactly the experience I had 11 with Kansas with Oscar Pogas. What gives him that ability to survive is the very spirit that Albizu Campos, Albizu Campos is a maestro, but he's deeper than a maestro in the sense that there's something that he taught which is based a great deal on Spanish mysticism. And you've got to really understand the Spanish mystics. And this mysticism is an amazing encounter with the other world, with the spiritual world. And so you could survive anything because for you there was something greater than yourself. And that greatness was informed by your ability to obviously even be in communication with the other world. Lolita wrote a letter called A Message from God in the 20th Century. A letter that she writes to President Eisenhower almost at the moment that she is in solitary confinement saying, God spoke to me and said, I must be the bearer of this message. And the message was against the hydrogen bomb. Imagine no one was talking against nuclear weapons. Lolita Leron did it before anybody did it. And for the letter, the jailers put her a year and a half in an insane asylum, literally in Alderson prison. She was treated like a crazy woman. Albizu was treated as a crazy man. But their greatness was really because not even people who were close to them could understand that incredible commitment to this understanding of a mystical world. And some of us who are quite materialist often put that aside, but I think it's very important for us to think about this. But I, I think that at the same time we talk about Oscar Collazo and obviously the fact that there was this huge campaign to commute the sentence of Oscar Collazo. A lot led by Rosa Collazo. But there was somebody else that was Mexi name. I want to honor her memory here. Isabel Col Icucci. Isabel Col Icucci is a Puerto Rican, was a Puerto Rican poet. Many people don't know much about her. She was the daughter of Jose Col Icucci, the founder of the Nationalist Party and the first president of the Nationalist Party in 1922. And she, obviously later on, he would break with the Nationalist Party, break with Albizu. The family became very much part of the uh, Puerto Rican, uh, the, the Popular Democratic Party. They would be, they are a very important family, part of what people would call the Puerto Rican sort of bourgeoisie. Isabel Colicucci would lead the international campaign to commute Oscar Kojasos' death sentence. Imagine the president, President Truman, the man who apparently Oscar Kojasos and Torres were supposed to kill in 1953 commuted their sentence, his sentence. 
it doesn't make a lot of sense. Politically, it doesn't, right? Well, sometimes there are a lot of things that happen that we really don't know, that history doesn't often reveal. And I had the privilege of meeting Isabel Colicucci very late in her life. And she was in Chicago, and we were celebrating Juan Antonio Cordero's 73rd birthday in Chicago. And um, I saw Isabel, she was doing a reading in a little bookstore. And I said, tonight we're gonna celebrate Juan Antonio Cordero's birthday. And she says, oh, I have to be there. And she came and read a poem from Jose de Diego, dedicated to Don Juan. And just before she came, I said, Isabel Colicucci is coming to be, to celebrate your birthday. And knowing Isabel Colicucci has never been an independentista, never has been a militant in the independence movement was very close to the popular Democratic Party. And he says, Oscar Collazo is alive because of that woman. He tells me, that woman, her family was well connected. That woman led a campaign that at one point was able to get a personal letter from Pope Pius XII asking President Truman to relieve, to commute the death sentence of Oscar Pegas. Almost nobody knows that. I was private to that incredible moment. And I'm sharing this with you because in the struggle to free the political prisoners. We often, and in the 1980s, and I'm gonna say, rightfully so, we led a struggle to say that the people who were arrested in Evanston on April the 4th, 1980, were not terrorists, they were patriots. And we led a campaign that said people have to respect that in Puerto Rico there are multiple expressions in terms of Puerto Rican independence. And among those expressions is obviously the expression of armed struggle. And so a lot of people in the independence movement were very, very afraid to work with and around the case of the prisoners. And let me tell you honestly, uh, once spoke about Carlos Feliciano. One of the interesting things is that in Puerto Rico in the independence movement, and I'm going to be very honest, it's quite elitist, and Puerto Ricans in the United States are not fully equal. That's a reality. One of the reasons you have the development of the New York Rican poets is because of the puritism of the Puerto Rican intellectual elite saying that you could not develop a Puerto Rican literature in English. What a stupid idea. But there were a lot of people in the independence movement who would say that the Puerto Ricans here who struggled for independence were crazy and were not part of the Puerto Rican independence movement. We had to fight against them. And so we did our fight, and I thought we did a good fight. But at some point, we had to change that discourse. We made the statement. We said they are patriots, and at the end, we got at least most of the independence movement to agree with that. Libertad para ti, mi Oscar López Rivera. 